Welcome. This is a lecture series designed to introduce the student to the standard Oklahoma academic standards for English language arts. Please have a paper and pencil ready to take notes. I will ask you to pause the screen. The better your notes, the more notes that you take, the more it will help you on your assignment later. Let's get started. Today we're going to look at Oklahoma Academic Standard 8.4.R.2. That's 8th grade standard for reading point two. This is how the standard reads. Students will use word parts, for example, affixes, Greek and Latin roots, and stems to define and determine the meaning of increasingly complex words. Please pause the video and write down what this standard is. How can you figure out the meaning of an unfamiliar word? You can do it by breaking down its parts. You can break it down by the prefix, by suffix, and then you can end up with the Greek or Latin root that is there that you are left with. Each one will provide a clue to help you define the meaning of a particular word. What you want to do is called word dissection. You dissect it, you break down those parts, you learn what the root is, then you can identify the root and figure out the meaning of an unfamiliar word. Try to focus on new root words and connect them to familiar root words that you already know. So let's pause the video and write down the definitions of affixes, prefixes, and suffixes. An affix is placed at the beginning or end of a root stem or word, or in the body of a word that, to modify its meaning. Prefixes and suffixes are both affixes. So a prefix is a letter or group of letters added to the beginning of a word. Look at that word in itself, a prefix, before. The word pre means before. Usually it gives you direction, it negates, or it intensifies. For the definition on suffix, we say that it's a letter or a group of letters added to the end of a word to make a new word. So what is the root? The root is the basic element of the word. It's what it would be if you took away the prefixes and the suffix, it stands alone. A stem word is a word form to which an affix can be attached. And then Greek and Latin roots are root words that come from the Greek language or the Latin language. You will find many of these words in daily use in the English language. Please pause the video and write down the definitions you see on this page. Why do you need to learn Latin and Greek roots? You may wonder since you don't speak Latin or Greek. But did you know that 60% of the English language is derived from Latin or Greek? And did you know that of those words, 90% of all English words that are three or more syllables come from Latin? Then whenever we're talking about the fields of science and technology, over 90% of those words are Latin or Greek. A single Latin root word can generate up to 20 English words. Can you believe that? So learning Greek and Latin roots can help readers to figure out what new words mean. That's why we want to learn what Latin and Greek root words are. Let's look at some common prefixes that you're going to see. Notice these first four lines. These are the most frequently used prefixes that you're going to encounter. They account for 97% of prefixed words in printed school English. Number one would be dis, D-I-S, apart, asunder, or away. That's what the definition is of this prefix. And in yellow, I have given you some examples. Disability, disbar, disbelief. How about disrespect? Whenever you use the word today, dis, and it means to disrespect somebody, did you know it came from a common prefix? Then the next line is in, m, ill, and ear. 
these all four are a little bit kind of like they're interchangeable because they all mean one thing. They mean not. For example, irrational, not rational. Immature, not mature. Illogical, not logical. Inseparable, not separable. Look at the next one, ray. Once more or returning is what that means. For example, if you retype something, you're doing it once more. If you revert, you're going back to something once more. Regeneration, going back, generating to the same thing or returning to the same thing. The last common prefix I have there is un, which means not as well. Unheard, not heard. Unused, not used. Unfelt, not felt. You need to learn these four common prefixes and what they mean since it does account for 97% of those words in printed school English, that should help you break the words down and to find those root words and to learn what it means. Many of the prefixes that you're going to encounter other than these are directional in nature. Take a look at the examples that I have done here. Please pause the video and write down the definitions in white for sure, and if it helps you, please write down the examples as well. Let's talk a little bit about suffixes. Actually, suffixes are the least important part of the word. Let's not disregard the word, but it does not usually help to figure out the understanding of the word's meaning, but it does help to indicate a part of speech. For example, biology, ology. It's a study of, right, you got it, bios. So let's look at a few of those examples here, like for example, less. Waterless, that means without water or lacking water. So you can take the suffixes and it may help you to figure out a word's meaning to some extent, but again, it's not the most important. But we still want to know what a suffix is. Please pause the video and write down the definition uh, of a suffix. And then I also would like you to write down at least one example here so that you understand what the suffix is. I have a chart here, and you can find these charts on the internet or your teacher can provide you with one that helps you to break down the root of a word and then look at the meaning. If you pause the video and look at some of these root words and then look at their meanings, then it might help you to start understanding how to use a root word to determine the meaning in a sentence. For example, let's just pick one here and choose the word cycle. The root word cycle. Have you ever heard of the word of motor cycle? The root is cycle, which means wheel. So what would a motor cycle be? That would be a cycle with a motor or wheels with a motor. What about a bicycle? Bi means two, sickle means wheel, two wheels. So see if you learn the root meanings of something then you can start breaking down things and then you can learn and you can create new words. Pause the video and take a few minutes to look at this chart. Let's go back and look at how our standard read. Standard in Oklahoma Academic Standard 8.4.R.2. It says students will use word parts, for example, affixes, Greek and Latin roots, and stems to define and determine the meaning of increasingly complex words. If you've been listening to my lecture series, you know how I expect you to learn increasingly complex words or to encounter them. I expect you to read. You need to be reading as much as possible every day. If you're in 8th grade, you need to be reading at least 45 minutes a day. You need to work up to it. If you're not there yet, that's okay. Start reading 5 or 10 minutes during the, each day and then increase your time every week until you can sit down and read sustainably for 45 minutes on your own without a break and understanding the text on your grade level or above.
Please practice these skills with assignments that your teacher or parent has given you, and then take an assessment to ensure mastery of the skill. Thank you for joining me today, and go out there and read.